So this is the continuation of mechanical vibration lecture seven. Uh, harmonically excited vibration is discussed down here. So in our previous uh, lecture, we try to cover um, forced vibration with no damping, but in this case we consider damping. So what will be the uh, solution for damped vibration? Okay, so let's see that. <laughs> So this is a system uh, with mass spring and the damper system, and which is uh, subjected to uh, forcing function F is equal to F not sine omega T, okay? So this is uh, one of uh, this type of system. <laughs> so the general uh, motion of equation or equation of motion is mx dot dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f not uh, cos omega t, or we can use sine omega t or cos. If the forcing function sine omega t, so we can take this as sine omega t. From your program, sine omega t. So this is question of motion. And the particular solution uh, assumed for this case is uh, x cos omega t minus pi. Okay, so this is the particular solution uh, considering this part zero means uh, homogeneous second order differential equation. Uh, mx dot dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to zero, then the solution becomes x cos omega t minus pi. So then x dot of the particular is equal to minus of x omega sine omega t minus pi. Uh, x dot dot is equal to minus x omega square cos omega t. So uh, making a successive differentiation on that, we can get uh, this value. So by substituting uh, this x particular uh, in this place, what we can get is this equation. Okay. So instead of x dot dot, we can substitute this. And instead of um, x dot, we substitute this part. And instead of uh, x, we have um, this relation. So x is the steady state amplitude. Okay, this x is steady state amplitude, and omega is the uh, natural frequency, the frequency of vibration. Okay, so we can substitute these values. Uh, on on this equation or in the equation of motion. Finally, what we can get is uh, this one. Uh, here, cos omega t, sine omega t, cos omega t. So here it is cos omega t. So the cos components uh, will be to one side, k minus m omega square, cos omega t minus pi minus uh, CW sine omega t minus pi, okay? Uh, so for all times, x, the steady state amplitude x, which is equal to F not cos omega t. So here we have, uh, we can expand these expressions. We have to expand this expression, cos omega t minus pi and sine omega t minus pi. So when we expand it, uh, cos omega t minus pi is equals to cos omega t cos omega pi minus, and no plus sine omega t sine omega pi. Sine omega t minus pi is equals to sine omega t cos omega pi minus cos omega t sine pi. So we again substitute this um, trigonometric relations on this equation. Okay, so the equation will be 
this one. So here, um, this long equation uh, will give us two equations. One is in terms of uh, cos omega t and another in terms of sine omega t. <coughs> okay, so what it is? One is k minus m omega squared cos pi plus uh, cw sine pi is a whole cos omega t x, which is equals to f naught cos omega t. And another one is we have no another sine term here. Sine term is not given. So that k minus uh, m omega square sine pi minus cw cos pi sine omega t x, which is equal to zero. So uh, we have two simultaneous equations. One equation, equation number two. So uh, this cos term will be zero, sine, term, uh, sine also. We remove it from the equation. Uh, finally, we can, uh, uh, we have these equations. So these two equations uh, will be placed in matrix form. Okay, in matrix, uh, A, B, C, D matrix types. Okay. So, and X cos pi, X sine pi. So this times this gives us F naught and this times this gives us zero. So uh, this is uh, the matrix form of representation. And as we know, matrix A times X is equal to B. X is equal to B matrix. The solution uh, for X is equal to A inverse B. So how we can find this A? Our A is this matrix. This is A, considered matrix A. This is uh, AX. And this is B, matrix B. Okay. So how we can find the inverse of A? Inverse of A is equal to one over determinant of A times adjoint of A. Okay. Sorry, this is kind of large. Okay. Are adjoint of A. And what is the determinant of A? Our matrix A determinant is equal to this times this minus this times this. Okay, one over determinant of A. So determinant of A is equal to uh, K minus M omega squared times K minus M omega squared plus uh, minus CW times minus of CW, which gives us K minus M omega squared is a whole square plus CW is a whole square. So this is the determinant of A. And the adjoint of A means, uh, uh, if this is the matrix, matrix A uh, with entry A, B, C, D, then uh, if we consider this as matrix A, adjoint of A means uh, adjoint of matrix A, uh, which is equal to uh, D minus of B minus of C and here A. This is adjoint of matrix A. So, which is, this is K minus M omega, uh, M omega square means, this is the D in three. This is A in three. This is minus of uh, B. This is minus of C. So, uh, this is adjoint matrix. So finally, our X is X cos pi, X sine pi. So, which is equal to one over uh, determinant matrix and uh, no, determinant uh, value times K minus M omega square minus, uh, 
uh, minus CW, CW, K minus uh, MW square times F naught, uh, F naught zero, means B matrix. This is B, this is A inverse, and this is X. So from that, what we can get is uh, one over K minus M omega squared whole square plus CW whole square times K minus M omega uh, square F naught, CW F naught. So this is the matrix. From that, what we can get uh, is uh, X cos pi, X cos pi is equals to uh, K minus M omega square F naught over K minus M omega square, whole square plus CW is whole square. X, X sine omega naught is equal to, again, uh, CW F naught over K minus M omega, uh, M omega square uh, is whole square plus CW is whole square. So this is <coughs> now, uh, from this, tan pi is equal to X sine pi over X cos pi. So which gives us, this over this. Finally, we can get CW over K minus M omega square. That is tan pi. So this shows us um, K minus M omega square F naught. Uh, we construct right angle triangle here. This is a right angle triangle. So this is the angle pi which we consider. So opposite side is uh, this side, CW F naught, okay? Adjacent side is uh, K minus M omega square F naught. So we have these values. Then substituting this, we can construct uh, this, if we consider this longest side R. So R is equals to, R is equals to, x squared plus y squared, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. If we consider this x, this as y, then r is this. So uh, that r is equal to radical of the uh, uh, x, x squared plus y squared. So we can substitute, finally we can get this equation. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the relation. Now we can reconstruct the sine and cos terms, because here sine and cos is uh, related with the uh, steady state amplitude x and F naught, so that let's separately see them. So sine pi is equal to, finally, uh, CW F naught over uh, radical of K minus M, because sine pi is equal to sine pi is equal to uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Our opposite is this thing, CW F naught over uh, hypotenuse is K minus M omega square zero square plus CW square the whole times F naught because F naught square F naught square, we can take it out. So we have CW over K minus M omega square zero square plus CW square under radical is uh, sine pi. Again, cos pi also k minus m omega, that is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Cos phi, cos pi is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So our adjacent side is this for pi and hypotenuse is this, so which is equal to k minus m omega square uh, the whole over k minus m omega square square plus the whole square plus c w is equal to square. Okay. Therefore, uh, tan 
pi is equal to tan inverse of uh, this quantity, k, okay. uh, tan inverse of. Uh, sorry, it is not under radical, but it is k minus m omega square only. Uh, so we can take it out. Uh, this square means it will come out, k minus m omega square. So now, once we know cos pi and uh, sine pi value, okay, once cos pi and sine pi are uh, fully defined here, uh, we can substitute uh, these equations and uh, the previous uh, two equations or the two simultaneous equations. Okay. That are, for example, this is one of the equation, k minus m omega, uh, so, k minus m omega square cos pi plus cw sine pi is a whole, x is equal to f naught is one of the equation. On that, we can substitute the sine value, cos pi is equal to this, the height uh, part, and uh, sine pi is this part. So by substituting this, what you can get? The uh, expressions, okay? So, k minus m omega square, k minus, so it is k minus m omega square, is whole square. Cw times Cw, so Cw is whole square over the hypotenuse part times x is f naught. So, from that, what you can get? Uh, this is redundant, I think. This equation is redundant, almost the same as the previous equation. Okay, no problem. So this equation is equal to k minus mw square, the whole square plus cw the whole square over radical k minus mw square, the whole square plus cw square times x, which is equal to this x is a steady state amplitude which we are going to find. So then uh, what we can do, <coughs> we can multiply the denominator by uh, the same term. So this gives us, uh, this times this gives us k minus m omega square, the whole square plus cw squared. So we can cancel these terms by this. We have left only k minus m omega under radical uh, this term. Okay. So, uh, then by uh, finally what we can get x is equal to f naught over radical of k minus m omega square is equal to square plus c w is equal to square. This is the solution for uh, steady state amplitude of uh, solution for uh, damp violation. Okay. So, now let's see some uh, rearrangement on terms, uh, including the definition of damped vibration terms. Uh, what will be our equation? So this is our particular solution for x cos omega t pi is the particular solution. And on particular solution, this x is uh, found as like this, and the pi is also, we have this pi value, okay? So now uh, substituting these values on uh, uh, the particular solution, we can get uh, this. So let's take uh, the k out from uh, the whole equation. When k comes out, we have uh, left one here, okay? This k comes out from the uh, radical of this thing. So here one left, and here it is m over k, okay? Here c over k, w, uh, then that w is already there, but here it is c over k. So we'll see what m over k, c over k, uh, and why this k comes out. We can see that. Now, 
k over m is equal to omega n square. Okay, k over m. This is reciprocal of this, so that we can find some uh, omega n term below here. Uh, another uh, k is equal to m omega n square, and c over m is equal to two zeta omega n, which implies c is equal to two zeta omega n m. Okay, and another term f naught over k is equal to delta star, which is a static deflection. So we have f naught. This k will come out here. Uh, so that will be represented by a, st uh, a static deflection. And another uh, omega over omega n is equal to r, that is frequency ratio. So this term uh, will be defined for later expression. So you see here, f naught over k, which is equal to delta ct. Another uh, one over uh, this uh, m over k, which is, is equal to one over k over m, <clears throat> so which is omega n squared. And substituting c values and k values in this equation, because k is equal to m omega n squared, uh, c is equal to t zeta omega n m, so we put it. Okay. From that, what we can get is one minus omega over omega n is the whole square plus two zeta omega over omega n, so all the square and the radical. This one over two represents a radical term. So no one thing left is omega over omega n is r. We can uh, represent this by r. So uh, x over x start. Uh, we bring this to here in order to find magnification factor, MF. MF magnification factor is equal to X steady state amplitude over static deflection, which is equal to one over one minus omega over omega n is equal to square, square plus uh, two zeta omega over omega n square whole and radical, so which is equal to uh, one over uh, radical of one minus r squared so whole square plus two zeta r uh, the whole square. So this is magnification factor. <coughs> so tan phi also represented with this expression two zeta r over one minus r squared. So this r is uh, Omega over omega n. Okay, so let's see graphically how we can uh, plot this thing. Okay. So assume that uh, this is a reference axis. Okay, reference axis is here uh, using a frequency re representation or frequency domain representation uh, from here to here to pi. Uh, again, here to here, it is 2 pi, means uh, the forcing frequency, the force, the graph of force and the graph of uh, particular solution. Here it seems like they are in phase, but sometimes they are out of phase, uh, so uh, that is the representation. Anyways, so let's take uh, this as a reference axis. And the first term is the uh, spring term, the spring force. Kx is the spring force. So uh, this is, this line represents a spring force line, vector force, spring force. And then uh, the damper, which is characterized by uh, x dot, that means in velocity, which is 90 degree with this, so which is CWX. Here, this is 90 degree. And then uh, acceleration also, acceleration term, that's X dot, M omega squared <coughs> X is the uh, acceleration term. So the force due to inertia, this is inertial force. 
this is discuss words due to discuss Dante or uh, Dante or also this is also makes 90 degree with uh, uh, this graph okay this axis so uh, m omega square x now our uh, vector is stopped here at this point now the vector which joins uh, the initial vector, which is kx vector, uh, to the forcing frequency, uh, no, to the inertial forces f naught, that is the excitation force, not the maximum amplitude of excitation force. So we can join this with f naught. So what is this? <laughs> um, this angle pi. Angle phi is uh, obtained uh, from this relation. Uh, the distance from here to here means this distance is equal to uh, kx minus uh, m omega uh, square. Actually, uh, we can put it. So we can make a right angle triangle in this. Okay. So F naught is here. Uh, this is now CWX. This distance is CWX. And this distance is uh, KX minus M omega square X. Okay. That is the distance. KX minus. M omega squares x. That means k minus m omega squares the whole x. So this is a graphical representation actually. So we can develop those equations uh, which we derive from here directly. How we can drive? Uh, I will show you in the next slide. So uh, we have similar uh, slides. So f of t, f naught cos omega t, this uh, x particular of t, x cos omega t minus pi uh, is uh, given with dotted line. Okay. Yeah. And x, the maximum amplitude x is equal to f naught over radical of k minus m omega squared rho square plus cw squared. This is. And the phase uh, difference between the force and the uh, uh, steady state uh, solution is equal to tan inverse of CW and radical K minus M omega square is whole square. This is uh, the phase difference. And the forcing frequency F naught is equal to uh, K minus M omega square is whole square plus CW square. Uh, that is under radical times X, the relation between force and the CD state amplitude. So this is the variation uh, between uh, magnification factor and the pi uh, with frequency ratio and damping ratio zeta. You can see it. Okay. Uh, for different values of zeta, uh, we can observe uh, different amplitude ratio and frequency ratio. Uh, what is that? Uh, for example, if zeta is 0 0.1, that is smaller value of zeta, the uh, x over uh, delta ICT or um, that is magnification factor uh, goes beyond uh, this limit. That implies it goes to some uh, uh, resonance situation. This, this is the point of resonance. Omega is equal to omega n. One means this is the resonance point. Okay. This is uh, resonance 
uh, region. Okay. So the ratio is the 0, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1, 1.2, 1.6. Uh, so this is a uh, frequency ratio. Amplitude ratio, uh, starting from this, it goes to some values. So zeta is very high, means five. That means we can observe very high damping in the system. Okay. This is this implies very high damping. Again, zeta three still high damping. Zeta two one point five still high damping, and zeta is equals to one means uh, that is um, shows this this graph. Uh, again, zeta less than one. Zeta less than one, we can observe these graphs. These are the graphs for zeta is equal. Okay. Zeta is equal to 0 0.3. Zeta is equal to 0 0.2. If 0 0.2, we can see like this. Zeta is equal to 0 0.1. For very small zeta, it will go infinity. That is resonance. That means the system is undamped and the uh, system is suspected for uh, resonance. Okay. What is our and what is the relation to this phase angle and the frequency ratio for various values of zeta? Zeta zero means that is completely undamped. Okay. For zeta zero, this is for zeta zero, this is for uh, zeta zero, these values. Zeta is equal to zero means undamped uh, situation. This line shows zeta zero. Now, for smaller value of zeta, 0 0.05, you can find this graph. For example, this graph. This graph goes like this, goes like this. Okay. And for zeta value greater than uh, near to one, we can find this type of graph. This graph. This graph represents uh, zeta one one means this graph. Sorry, this is for zeta one. Here also zeta one means this graph. <coughs> and for higher value of zeta, this higher value of zeta. See, this, this graph shows the higher value of z. Okay. So these are uh, graphical representations for phase angle pi and frequency ratio uh, uh, with respect to the damping ratio. So let's see, uh, let's summarize the uh, previous question, okay. So mass, uh, spring, and the damper systems are there. Okay, so spring is characterized by X. So spring force is Kx. The damper is characterized by uh, velocity. So damper force is Cx dot. And the mass is inertial uh, force Mx uh, dot dot. Mx dot dot, it is not. Uh, m x bit, m times x dot dot. So natural frequency uh, of the system is uh, k over m, and the damped natural frequency is omega n is equals to one minus zeta square because what we are talking is a damped system. Uh, so omega is the force uh, frequency, and the omega n is the natural frequency. Okay. F naught is amplitude of force. Okay, so uh, this F naught is maximum amplitude of uh, the force. And delta statics F naught K, these are some definitions. So we have different types of uh, uh, 
solutions, for example, uh, sine solution, or it can be cos solution. So, uh, when the force uh, solution for force and so the particular solution are the same, we call it as in phase. The force and the amplitude are in phase. So, F and X of T in phase in this case. In some case, uh, one may go here, another is like this. So that implies they are in out of phase. Okay. Now the governing equation or equation motion is mx dot dot plus cx dot plus kx, which is f naught sine omega t okay, for this sine omega t is. Now the x max is this x. X is equal to x sine omega t minus pi. So x minus maximum uh, amplitude is x. Now, the acceleration from this uh, equation, assuming this as a solution for this equation, then x dot is equal to x omega cos omega t minus pi is the uh, velocity equation. So x uh, dot max is x omega. This x omega is the maximum amplitude of the uh, velocity. And then for the same solution, x dot dot is equal to minus of x omega square sine omega t max. So this is the maximum amplitude of the acceleration. So uh, x dot dot max is equal to minus of x omega square. That is the maximum amplitude. So we are going to use some graphical methods. Okay. And this is out of phase case. Okay. This is F naught is equal to sine omega t. And X of t, X of t is equal to cos omega t. Uh, X times cos omega t then it is called out of phase, okay? It's equal to x sine omega t plus pi, f, f not sine. So this pi is phase difference actually here. They are in, uh, it is out of phase uh, by pi. That is the phase difference. Okay, let's see the, the graphical representation. So assume uh, x is equal to x sine omega t minus pi is the equation. F is equal to f naught sine omega t is another equation. X max is equal to x. X dot max is equal to x omega. And x dot dot max is equal to minus of x omega. So <coughs> using these equations, uh, uh, assume this as a reference axis. Uh, let, let's call it as reference R. Then Kx, the vector, this vector uh, implies the uh, elastic force or spring force Kx. And then 90 degree, uh, in 90 degree with uh, elastic force, we can get the uh, uh, damper force. Okay, Cx omega is the damper force. Again, 90 degree to the uh, damper force, there is inertial force, Mx omega squared. So it is uh, in this direction. And then the vector which joins the initial point of uh, the vector to the final is F naught. Okay, F naught have some uh, uh, theta angle which is which we are going to find. So F naught and this distance, distance from here to here, K minus M omega square X, as I have discussed uh, in the previous slide. So K minus M omega square X. That means from here to here, it is K minus M omega uh, square times X. And this distance, 
is equal to CX omega, CX omega, yeah. And this is F naught. And this is theta, which we uh, call theta. Now, from the right angle triangle, because this is 90 degree, from this right angle triangle, uh, F naught square, directly F naught square is equals to uh, CX uh, omega square plus K minus M uh, omega square X square. So which directly gives us F naught is equals to and the radical of this uh, thing. Finally, X is equals to uh, F naught over uh, this parameter. So it is very short here. In the previous, we have followed matrix equation, sine and the cosine equation and so on. But here we directly obtain the steady state amplitude of the equation, x is equal to uh, f naught over k. Actually, once we took k out from inside here, that's what. So uh, this is the equation for uh, this thing. Now we are going to define some terms. Okay, x uh, the, the equation mx dot dot cx dot plus kx is equal to no sine omega t is there. Uh, considering the homogeneous part of solution, only the homogeneous part of solution, uh, we have c over m because this m uh, we divide both sides by m. Okay. Uh, just neglecting this part, we have uh, C over M is equal to 2 zeta omega N, K over M is equal to omega N square. Okay, so C over M is equal to uh, 2 zeta omega N, this equation of here. Uh, so C over K uh, finally gives us 2 zeta omega N over omega N square. Okay, so we substitute these equations. Uh, finally, uh, it gives us x is equal to x naught. X naught means delta, that is uh, uh, static deflection. Okay, so magnification factor is equal to x over x naught or x over delta st, which gives us one over two zeta r, the whole square, plus one minus r square, uh, this thing. So, uh, this is what we have uh, discussed in the previous slides. Now, just to conclude this part of uh, discussion, uh, what is there uh, with the magnification factor? So let's see the characteristic of magnification factor. For zeta is equal to zero, uh, uh, the equation six means uh, uh, we have equation six there. You can see this equation. Okay. Question six means this equation, especially this equation, <coughs> the magnification factor equation. So what? Magnification factor reduces to x over uh, one over one minus r square. Why? Because uh, zeta is zero means the damping part will be uh, removed, and uh, damping ratio is equal to one. That means magnification factor uh, approaches to infinity. Uh, zeta greater than zero means uh, magnification factor is equal to uh, one over one minus r square. For any value uh, r, the uh, frequency ratio r, the higher value of zeta reduces the value of magnification factor. The steady state amplitude x becomes smaller with increasing value of omega. That means magnification factor approaches infinity as r approaches infinity. And then in between zero to uh, zeta and between zero to one over uh, radical two, maximum MFA occurs. In this range, maximum MFA occurs when uh, 
damping ratio is equal to one minus two zeta, uh, two times zeta square over uh, omega is equal to omega n times, means uh, down to natural frequency this one, omega n uh, radical one minus two zeta square. Maximum value of x occur when uh, r is equal to one minus two zeta square and gives x max is equal to x stat, uh, static deflection delta st over two zeta radical one minus zeta square, which implies a magnification factor at point of resonance. That means omega is equal to omega n implies one over two zeta, which is q. We call this as a quality factor. This q is equal to quality factor. For zeta is equal to one over two, uh, one over radical two, uh, uh, differentiating the magnification factor with respect to frequency ratio, uh, we can get, uh, sorry. Doing some class. Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, zeta greater than one over uh, radical two, the graph of magnification factor uh, monotonically decreases, increasing value of r. Okay. So, what is the characteristics of phase angle? Uh, observe. Okay, from the previous two graphs. For zeta is equal to zero, pi is equal to zero. When uh, zeta in between, I uh, know uh, r is in between zero to one. And pi is 180. Uh, this implies that the excitation and response are in phase for uh, this range of uh, uh, values. And out of phase four, uh, are greater than one. For uh, zeta greater than zero and r in between zero to one, then uh, pi is zero to 90, which implies uh, that the response lacks excitation. <coughs> so these are the conditions actually. One can easily see uh, these conditions from uh, 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 most vibration books. Yeah. So I think this is uh, enough for today. But let's see what the general solution. What is the general solution for the forced uh, vibration case? So we have particular solution. We have homogeneous solution. Okay, so the homogeneous solution is the solution that obtained for uh, homogeneous part of the equation. So in our governing equation, we have, we will uh, create homogeneous part. That means by creating the governing equation, which is equal to zero by uh, avoiding the forcing function. Okay, and then, Particular solution is in general form for the forcing function. Okay, so uh, x homogeneous is equals to x uh, e zeta omega n t cos omega d t minus pi homogeneous. This is uh, already uh, we have discussed in the uh, other lectures. So uh, the equation consists of this part, this plus this one. So this is the general solution. X homogeneous is the amplitude of uh, the homogeneous solution part. And X is the steady state uh, solution, the maximum amplitude of steady state solution. Pi is the phase difference of steady state. And omega D is the damped natural frequency. Okay. And the pi H is the uh, 
phase difference uh, due to uh, the homogeneous solution. So we have here uh, many variables are there. Phi is there, x is there, phi h is there, xh is there. So these all are uh, defined. And we can uh, define them applying the uh, initial conditions. Like x of t is equal to zero gives x naught. And x dot of t is equal to zero gives us this. That means the initial conditions of the uh, vibration. So <coughs> x naught, uh, just substituting x naught on this equation, on equation A uh, for t is equal to zero, we can get this equation. T zero means this part is a power of uh, zero, then it is one. T zero means here we have left cos uh, pi, pi naught. Yeah, we can substitute it instead of pi h pi naught. And here also this is zero. So that is the equation. X naught is equal to x homogeneous cos pi h plus x cos pi. One equation. Another uh, x dot, uh, they're derivating uh, this x uh, to x dot. Um, we and substituting this uh, condition. We have uh, uh, finally we can get this thing. x naught is x naught dot is equal to minus of zeta omega n x h cos pi h plus omega d uh, x h sine uh, pi h plus omega x sine pi. So we have two equations, this one and this one. <coughs> so the constants x h and pi h are obtained from uh, the previous b and the c solutions. Means, uh, c is this one. This is the C solution and this is B. From this and this, we can find uh, this XH and Phi H. So, XH is equal to one over omega D. Um, zeta omega n x naught plus x naught minus zeta omega n uh, cos pi minus. Uh, so these are uh, directly taking these equations. Okay. Substituting the x naught value <coughs> or x h and the pi to a non and two equations. So uh, that gives us this relation. Phi H also gives uh, this. Finally, the steady state amplitude X is already known. We derived it in the previous uh, case. And the Phi also uh, for the forcing function, but Phi is equal to this already we found. So question one, two, three, four. So we have four unknowns and four equations here. So we can now uh, implement these equations to uh, our particular problem. So the total uh, response of system of harmonically excited uh, on this, let's take some uh, numeric values. Uh, single degree of freedom uh, is considered it, it consists of spring mass system, okay, and with damper. So let, let's consider this as uh, one of the mass, which is equal to 15 kg. Let's consider a spring, and let's consider the damper here. So damper um, 30 Newton per meter second. 
okay. uh, k is equals to 5,000, okay. all given here. X naught is equal to 0 0.02 meter. X dot naught is equal to zero. So these are the conditions. Uh, we have two questions here. An external force of rock is equal to F naught cos omega t, which is equal to 10 cos 10 t. So this means uh, F naught is 100 Newton. Newton. Uh, omega, the forcing frequency is equal to 10. That is the information here. Uh, B, free vibration, F of t is equal to zero. That is the homogeneous part of the solution. So um, the forcing or the steady state conditions will be removed from the system. So what we are going to find is uh, find total response of single degree of freedom. So that total response is representing in terms of the amplitude of vibration. <coughs> okay, so let's find the natural frequency of the system that is radical of k over m, also which gives us this value. And the forcing frequency is already 100 given, uh, no, 10 is given here. So 10 over r is equal to and this is what you call a uh, um, frequency ratio. Frequency ratio. So frequency ratio is this R. Zeta is equal to C over C critical. In damping coefficient over critical damping coefficient. So C over two radical K, so which gives us uh, uh, this value. So this is zeta value. So this is small value of zeta. And the damped natural frequency omega is equal to the natural frequency times uh, radical of y minus zeta square, which gives us uh, 17.753 rad per second. And the static deflection is equal to F naught over K. So if naught is 100 from the given information, K is this, so 0 0.02. These are uh, important parameters to be defined. So X is equal to uh, delta S T over one minus R square, the whole square plus two zeta R the whole square. So this is already found, uh, given actually, 0 0.02 meter. Okay. Uh, R is obtained. Okay. Zeta is also there. So we calculate this value and finally we get, this is the response. No, this is the uh, uh, steady state amplitude of the vibration. And the phase angle of this vibration uh, tan inverse of uh, two zeta r over one minus r square, uh, which gives 4.91 uh, degree is the pi. Now applying x naught is equal to uh, this meter and uh, x naught is equal to zero, x dot naught is zero uh, in the equation. Finally, what we can get is uh, Uh, X naught is equal to X, X homogeneous E, uh, the power of minus zeta omega and it equals pi H plus X cos pi. So uh, X is already obtained, uh, pi is already obtained, okay. Uh, what is left? Zeta is known, omega n is known, which we don't know is x homogeneous. Hmm? So x naught is given 0 0.02. From that, we directly uh, get x homogeneous cos pi h is equal to 0 minus 0 0.0084. Again, from the condition of uh, flow velocity, it is zero here. 
subscript values of uh, these other parameters. Finally, we get x homogeneous sin pi h is equal to minus 0 0.0018. Now we have two questions. Question number one and the question number two. And also we have two unknowns. <coughs> that is uh, this x homogeneous and pi homogeneous. So we can easily, sub by substituting this thing, we can easily find it. So we can do, uh, actually this over this also gives us uh, sine tan pi, which, which, which gives us some result actually. From that we can also find tan pi, Pi hyper uh, homogeneous is equal to uh, this equation over sine minus zero point zero zero one eight or minus zero point cos pi zero zero eight four. From this we can find pi is equal to tan inverse of those values. Tan inverse of tan inverse of uh, which is um, one eight over okay, one eight over eight four. One can find pi from uh, pi h from here. Once pi h um, is obtained by substituting the value of pi h uh, in this equation. We can find the x h. Or uh, one can go another long term. Uh, x h is equal to this time this. That is actually long pass. But it is already there. OK, that's good. Yeah, so both of the equations are solved. Now we apply these values to the general equation. So now the general solution is x of t, uh, which is equal to this. So x h is 0 0.086. Okay, zeta is uh, uh, 0 0.0548. Omega n is 18.26. So we substitute the values. Finally, we can get this response. This is the general response of uh, system with force um, uh, frequency. In B case, it is a free vibration case, <coughs> free vibration, damped free vibration case. So the only question in x dot dot plus cx plus kx is equal to zero. And um, x of t, which is equal to x homogeneous of t only this equation. So we have two unknowns, this one and uh, uh, this thing. And we can calculate the damped frequency or radical that is calculated. National conditions are there. So this is x homogeneous solution, x naught square plus two omega in x naught over omega in as a whole square. We directly take it from our uh, lecture number three or uh, four like that. Okay, from that we can find this. And pi homogeneous, tan inverse of x naught dot plus two zeta omega in x naught over x naught omega d, which gives us minus of 3.226 degree. So these are solutions for the homogeneous equation. So Substituting all these x, uh, h, and pi h, we can finally get this equation. This is the general response. So this is all I want. Uh, we'll see this part in the next. So um, anyways, uh, this is all I want today.